Hello, good afternoon, National London here again with um, part three of my uh, 80s video series. Uh, I think it's part three, yeah, part three. And today, I think I mentioned in my last video, I'm going to be talking about the um, some heavy metal that uh, I was into during the 80s. Uh, it was a good year for heavy metal, really. It um, kind of became heavy metal in many ways in, in the 80s. Um, I was always a big fan of that kind of music from the early days, Black Sabbath and Deep Purple, Led Zeppelin, that kind of thing, but it was just known as heavy rock or hard rock. Uh, so the term heavy metal came in full use in the 80s, really. Um, I don't, I think it was around in, in the 70s, but I don't, don't, to be honest, I don't really remember it. But um, but anyway, it also became um, the start of all those little sub-genres cropping up, thrash metal and glam metal and the... Uh, hair metal and whatnot but anyway so i've got here 10 of my uh, the um some of the metal bands i was listening to during the 80s uh, some I've, i'm still into now some not maybe uh i'm not counting i think i've said previously i'm not counting uh, bands like um iron maiden acdc motorhead metallica and the other big four thrash metal bands um because I've already talked about those quite a lot on the channel, they've got their own rankings and own top ten. So there is one band here that I've decided to feature as well, <laughs> because I think they need a bit more, a bit more promotion, a bit more love. Uh, there's a couple of albums in here that I've uh, mentioned before for different reasons, maybe. But um, uh, yeah, we'll um, just um, plow through this, shall we? Uh, okay, ten, um, ten great metal bands from the eighties. Okay, I'm going to start off. This first one um, came out in 1988. It's already featured on this channel. It was in, it was in my concept albums um, video. Uh, the band is Queensryche and the album Operation Mindcrime, like I say, 1988. Uh, now, Qu Queensryche are a little bit of a one album band for me. Uh, I, I did a series on one album, or a video on one album bands. Um, from when I was a teenager, this is uh, this is definitely one from the eighties. I never really got into any of their other stuff. Uh, in fact, this is the only one I own by them now. I did a, a couple of other albums by them, but I just got rid of them basically. This is the only one for me, really. Um, there was a sequel, um, Operation Mind Crime Part Two, that I listened to and didn't really think much of. But yeah, um, this is the one for me. Concept album, of course. That's why it's in the concept album uh, video. I'm gonna go and check that out. Um, the, I'll, I'll talk in more depth about this. I think it's one of the typical dystopian future type um, concepts. So some great tracks on it. I saw the band on the tour. Um, I was into them enough to go and do that. Um, but they didn't really play the whole album as a concept. They kind of like missed out a few tracks. One in particular was "The Needle Lies," which is one of the best tracks on the album. But, um, Anyhow, as far as um, albums go, this is a great album. There'll, there'll always be a place in my uh, my heart for this album. And um, unfortunately, the rest of the output by Queen's Rack I was never really into, but um, there we go. They're a Seattle band from the States. I think they're still going uh, in whatever format. They were, they were split into two different versions of the band at one point, but uh, there we go. Queen's Rack, I mean, at number 10. Okay, I've talked about genres and subgenres. This is a genre which is kind of like invented by this band. Uh, that genre was grindcore, which um, it's kind of like mixed all kinds of extreme metal, extreme punk, hardcore, all kinds of stuff. Uh, it's a UK band. They're uh, I think they're found in Birmingham, in the Birmingham area, and it's Napalm Death. And this is their second album from Enslavement to Obliteration. Which um, came out. Uh, this was nineteen eighty eight as well. In the same year. Um, good year for metal eighty eight actually, as you'll um, realise in the future, in the that one well, very very shortly. Uh, but yeah, well, I mean the grindcore thing, like I say, just a mixture of uh, punk, hardcore, metal, all kinds of stuff. Um, bit thrashy, bit extreme. Um, very volatile um, lineup. They they kept changing the early years. The band formed uh, 1981. Uh, this was their second release in '88, and I think even by the first album, there was no original members left in the band. Uh, the lineup on this um, features Lee Dorian, uh, Lee Dorian on vocals. Uh, there's a bit of the band on the back there. Lee Dorian on vocals, Bill Steer on guitar, uh, Shane uh, Embry on bass, who. Um, wasn't the original bass player, but he's the longest serving member, and uh, Mick Harris on drums. But um, yeah, an incredible band, really. Um, very volatile music as well, actually. 
Uh, there's 22 tracks on here, and the album's only about 29 minutes long, so you can imagine <laughs> that's uh, pretty extreme. There's, um, I think that the the, um, the shortest track is the track... Which one is it? Uh, can't remember now. So many tracks to read through. I think Blind to the Truth, I think, was the shortest track, coming in at about 20 seconds. And the longest track, uh, Evolved as One, which is the opening track, it's an absolute epic by uh, Napalm Death Standards. It's um, it's about three minutes long, three minutes twenty seconds long, maybe three minutes thirteen second or something. So that's epic standards. You, you talk, you know, that's like uh, Emma Lake and Palmer standards. <laughs> but anyway, but uh, yeah, great, great band. They're um, still around today. They've uh, they've never stopped touring really. I'm still going out. They've tons of albums. I've always been into them. Uh, they're a really good live band as well. One of those things, a little, little bit of novelty value in the early days. I thought oh, there's such a bit of humor, humor about them. The way it was just so short, with the snarly shouting, you can't tell what he's saying, lyrics and uh, vocal vocal delivery, and all the gr the growling and, um, like I said, the very short songs. Um, they did a, a special song that was about, I think, it was about seconds a second long, especially for the BBC once. They were, they were part of a documentary. Uh, this year, I think it was. This, um, yeah, 1998 came out, and BBC did a documentary about heavy metal, and Napalm Death were featured quite a lot in that. But, um, but yeah, good fun. I saw the last saw them live. When was it? Uh, gosh, 2015. I think I saw them. They were on with Carcass, who were uh, one of the bands are closely associated with uh, Napalm Death. In fact, Bill Steer, who was on guitar on this, was also in Carcass at the same time. I think, and he's still with Carcass. I don't think he's not with Napalm Death anymore. But, uh, but anyway. Uh, an intriguing listen, and um, the inventors of the grindcore genre, Napalm Death, in at number nine. Okay, um, what are we now? Uh, rah, 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 number eight. Uh, now, one of the I think one of the the reasons that metal became so big, or had a bit of a resurgence in the eighties, particularly in the UK, was of the um, that uh, movement called the new wave of British heavy metal. Iron Maiden became the most successful of that um, that, that um, movement, uh, closely followed by Def Leppard. They've had huge international sex, and they're both still going strong to this very day. Um, one of the bands who didn't quite have the success started out around the same time. I think they formed in the late 70s, 76, 77, um, released a debut album in 1980 that, uh, according to New Wave of British Heavy Metal Aficionados, 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 <laughs> Little, 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 put my teeth in, um, is possibly the best um, album of the genre outright. Uh, that band is Angel Witch, and this is their debut album, subtitled debut, uh, which has featured on this channel before. Uh, we did, a, I did, um, uh, what was it, uh, a video about uh, album sleeves using um, old masters, basically. Uh, the painting here is called The Fallen Angels entering pandemonium and it's credited to um the british artist john martin but um i've been looking recently i can't remember if i, I can't remember if i knew that by the time I, when, when i did the original video it may not be by him it's very very similar to his but it's uh, it's now um listed they take galleries attributed to john martin but yeah it was it was a it was a great album it's not brilliant i must admit personally i don't i don't agree with it being the, the probably the, the you know the best album of that of that um movement but still pretty good um, they're a kind of a power trio. They're the guys at the back there, so it's all very this kind of like tongue in cheek kind of devil worship stuff going on. But uh, yeah, it was great. And the title track is really, really good. It's a bit of an anthem, and um, it used to be played by uh, DJs at heavy metal discos around the, around the country at the time. And yeah, it was a good band. Uh, I think the, the the reason they lost momentum was it took them five years to um, release a, a follow up album where. Uh, a lot of the other bands were doing an album a year or maybe two albums in one year, but um, yeah, they kind of lost lost um, traction a bit, and that was that. But I think they're still around. I'm not quite sure in whatever um, whatever um, lineup still going. Whether it's the original lineup or not, I've no idea. But uh, yeah, Angel Witch, Angel Witch from 1980, coming out at number eight. Okay, no one very unsuccessful, commercially unsuccessful band to one of the most the biggest metal bands ever, uh, particularly with this album, their debut. Uh, I've got to mention this band, they were around, when did they form? I think they formed around 85, they're from Los Angeles. They're on the road up at the moment, as we speak, they've actually just recently been to New Zealand, and the, the band is Guns N' Roses, and this is their debut album, Appetite for Destruction, 
which I got when it came out. Um, a lot of hype around this band. Um, I first heard the um, the single, I think the lead single, um, It's So Easy. I had that on the seven inch as well, but I kind of lost it over the years. Um, and then I got the album. Um, of course, this is with the original sleeve as well. This sleeve didn't last very long. It got banned and then replaced with that uh, Celtic Cross version, which is the... Uh, uh, the more, the more, the better known one. I think this artwork, um, it was designed by Robert Williams from a painting by Robert Williams, um, is still around, but more on the on the the inside or the booklets, the booklet of the CD or whatever. But as you can see, I've still got the the original. Um, but yeah, great. It was just a biggest selling debut album ever. A huge million, multi million copies sold. It's like one of the biggest, it's in the top ten greatest um, selling albums ever. Um, and they're, they're really still milking it to this day, really. Uh, personally, I did like the um, the second couple of albums that came out. And I know we did an EP in 88 called uh, a, um, G&R Lies. It was like a mixture of acoustic. It was like an EP, it was a mini album kind of thing. But their, their proper follow-up was 1991's uh, Usual Illusion albums. Two double albums that came out on the same day. And I do really like those. I mean, um, if you can combine those... To a single album is probably their their best stuff, but this is great. I mean, I'm not taking anything away from this. It was a great, uh, very very exciting, very controversial. There are the guys on the back, the original lineup. I saw that lineup uh, the following year, '88. Um, I've seen them since. I've not I've not followed them much since uh, since they've reformed. I, I kind of don't see the point. Really, there's only three of them left now. Um, but um, yeah, great great album. Welcome to the Jungle. What a great opener. One of those great album openers. Um, I've just seen a uh, video recently about album openers. Um, I thought oh, I might do one of those myself, really. Will Welcome to the Jungle be in that? Who knows? And they got it so easy, Night Train. Um, just classic, one after another classic. Um, the only one that I never really got into too much was Paradise City, whose closest side one. That's one of those, it's a purple rain moment for me. It's one song that everyone goes on about how great it is, but it never did it much for me. Uh, Sweet Child of Mine, of course, is on here, which is our big number one smash hit single. Uh, that I don't really ne ever need to hear again, but yeah, great album. Um, one of those albums is slightly overplayed now. Everyone goes about if you listen to rock FM radios and stations and that they're just still playing it to this day. I mean, pretty much every track, but um, definitely worth a mention. Definitely a big part of my uh, metal loving eighties. So Guns and Roses, Appetite for Destruction. Okay, um, what was this band? Groove Metal. Groove metal. This was uh, one of the, one of the first groove metal bands. Off, bit thrashy as well, bit hardcorey. Who knows? A uh, band from New York uh, called Prong. This was a debut release. I think it was their debut release. It's like a mini album. Primitive Origins. With that, you know, I love the sleeves. A cool sleeve. Now there's no no credit for the artist on the sleeve, so I had to do a bit of research, and it's um, by a guy called uh, Sean Taggart. Did the artwork for that? It's a real kind of cartoon look about it, but it's really really nice. And this is a great album, really really original sound. They're uh, Pronger Power Trio. Um, you got a guy called um, Tommy Victor, who's the uh, guitarist, vocalist, and songwriter. Uh, I first heard them um, on the John Peel show, actually. Funny enough, and they ended, they did a John Peel session, which features some uh, tracks off this. And uh, the John Peel session is now available as a as a release, which is also really really good. But yeah, this was as great. Um, they never really got anywhere, but they're a good, they're a big influence on a lot of the groove metal bands that came later. And uh, this album is one of my favourite albums of the of the era. I really loved it, and um, I still enjoy playing it today. Um, and I still enjoy looking at the sleeve as well. That'd be uh, I'd, like, I'd, I'd like to investigate some more um, art by this chap. I'll see if there's any more around. See if there's any more album sleeves, but. Uh, but that definitely worth uh, listening to. This Prong Primitive Origins from uh, oh this was when was this released? Eighty seven. This came out. So that's that. Now, okay, one of my favourite bands. Another subgenre here: crossover thrash. This is the band that kind of started out in the hardcore, skatecore kind of era. Got into thrash. Whatever, you know, they're sometimes called punk, but I don't know. They were definitely one of my very favourite bands in the sort of mid, mid to late 80s. Um, I still listen to this day. I, I can never tire of listening to this band. I have followed them a bit uh, since then. They're still going, albeit with only one original member left. And uh, that band is Suicidal Tendencies. And this was, uh, I think, my, I think their best album, How Will I Laugh Tomorrow? 
when I can't even smile today. Um, this came out in 1988, like I was saying, good year for heavy metal. But yeah, what a great, great band. I got into them the previous year on their Join the Army release, and I saw them on, on that tour. I, um, I've seen Suicide Tennessee, I saw them three times in three successive years at the same little club, <laughs> really, really small club. We showed they didn't really grow in stature over those years, and uh, I think they had a different lineup um, each time. They definitely had a different bass player, because the third time I saw them, they had uh, Robert Trulio, who's um, the current bass player for Metallica. He was in there, who then went on to play with Ozzy Osbourne, and like I say, he's now with Metallica. But uh, yeah, just great, great band, really, really exciting. Um, they had that skate theme going on in the early days. Uh, this was the lineup that featured uh, Rocky George, the guy. Yeah, superb, underrated guitarist, really, really brilliant guitarist. Uh, Mike Muir in the centre there, Lee Vocalist, he's the guy who's still with them. And still, still trudging along, doing the club circuit, doing the festival circuit. But, uh, uh, yeah, this is my... The, the, I, think, I think pretty much every album is worth investigating, but this is definitely my favourite. I just love this. Um, Sorbator, have the T-shirt, and uh, just brilliant. Trip at the Brain, Hearing Voices, Pledge Your Allegiance. Uh, how will I I'll laugh tomorrow? The Miracle Servant Slam. Not a bad track on it, actually. One of those contenders for perfect album, I think. Anyway, there we go. ST, Suicidal Tendencies. Number, where are we? I've lost track now. Number five. We're in the top five. Yeah, number five. Brilliant, brilliant band. Okay, uh, like I say, I'm not mentioning the big four thrash metal, which is Metallica, Megadeth, Anthrax, Slayer. Second tier, Big Four. This band, I think, are definitely should be in that. They're um, from, where are they from? San Francisco, Bay Area, uh, around about the same time. Uh, I think they were formed in um, 82, around about that time. I got into them around this time on this album, which was their second release, which came out in, when did this come out? 86, hang on, where was it? Um, uh, 88, oh, 88, yeah. <laughs> of course it did, <laughs> the great year for metal. Uh, band is Death Angel, the album Frolic, Frolic Through the Park. Uh, just brilliant. Um, in terms of style, they kind of fit nicely alongside Anthrax, actually. Um, uh, Anthrax, obviously, from New York, so um, I don't know if that makes a difference. But yeah, they, they fit. Uh, they're not quite as uh, symphonic, or um, they, it's kind of a fun side to them. Uh, but really, really cool. Um, there's a band on the back. Um, this band is still going strong um, with two original members. We've got um, uh, Mark Mark Ozegueda, Mark Ozegueda on vocals, and uh, Rob Cavastani. Cavast Cavast Apologies for pronunciation. Rob Cavastani on, on guitar. They were still from the original lineup, and they're still with the band. I saw them a few years back. They came over here touring with Sepultura as a double. A double bill. It was really, really good. Um, good to see them uh, still, still doing the stuff. Really, I uh, saw a, um, an article about Death Angel, and apparently one of those bands a lot of um, fans consider have, have never dropped the ball. They've got their output of albums. They've never done a bad album. Uh, I can I possibly agree with that. I mean, I've heard all their albums. They're all, they're all pretty good. I, just, I love this earlier period though, the late eighties. Um, this, like I said, this was their second album. But it's really, really cool. It's really cool, fun band, very exciting. Uh, I played this album this morning, actually, but spun it on for a quick spin. And just thought, oh, it's still great after all these years. They do a cover of a Kiss, the Kiss classic, um, Cold Gin, on side two, which is pretty cool. It uh, shows a bit of their influence, I suppose. But uh, yeah, de de definitely a um, great album, great band, and still going strong. If you see them in, they come to a town near you, go and, go and see them. Uh, Death Angel, Frolic Through the Park, from 1988. Okay, uh, again on uh, with the thrash metal scene. These have a connection with um, Anthrax. They were formed by the Anthrax uh, original bass player, Don Lilke, who uh, teamed, up, teamed up with um, John Connolly uh, to form the band Nuclear Assault. So these are, these are the second tier, part of the big eight, should we say. Nuclear Assault, and this is their, I think this was their first release, this is the one I got into with them on, um, it's an EP, Brain Death, it's got three tracks on it, but it has such an effect on me, I thought the, the, the Brain Brain Death uh, track itself is just incredible, a uh, multi-part epic single, um, and again it was part of that, this this came out, uh, 87 was this, hang on, there's a date on here, is there a date, was it 86, 87, I can't remember, I think it might be in 88, 
Did I, did I make a note? 86, yeah, 86 came out. And uh, again, um, this, this featured quite heavily in that uh, BBC documentary. Uh, the band weren't interviewed or anything, but um, I think the track was featured when they were showing um, scenes from heavy metal nightclubs. But it is, it's just great. Um, the, the, the accompanying album, the, or the first album, didn't have the track on it. I think it was added later to expanded editions. But um, it's really, really cool. Saw the band a couple of times. Saw them once supporting Slayer, which was great. It was a really cool double bill. But um, I th I'm not quite sure if they're still around. They're one of those bands that kind of like, um, they were around for about 10, 11 years maybe, and then folded, but have since come back two or three times to, to refund for one-off tours or whatever, or one-off gigs. So it's, it's hard to keep track with a lot of these bands because, you know, there's just um, too much going on. But this is definitely uh, worth investigating. And then their albums, I mean, I heard some more recent stuff of theirs, um, well, when I say recent, <laughs> 90s, and it's still, still pretty good. Good fun band. Nuclear Assault, I and mean, this is their uh, debut release, uh, Brain Death EP. Okay, one of my favourite bands, oh, slightly damaged sleeve here, oh dear, to get the glue out, um, that I really got into, that were very, very influential, although never really made the big town themselves. Uh, again, another genre-defining moment. This is a more kind of black metal. Uh, the band uh, from Switzerland. We've got a couple of uh, a couple of releases here to show you. The band from Switzerland. One album has featured here before on this on this channel. The band is Celtic Frost. Uh, like I say, from Switzerland. Uh, there was um, this album which came out in '87, which was on my um, album sleeves. One of my album sleeves videos featuring the Hieronymus Bosch sleeve there into the Pandemonium. Absolutely brilliant. Um, band that's um, difficult to, at this point, they were very difficult to categorise really. They were, they were heavy metal, but they were, they were kind of a little bit. This one in particular had all kinds of different musical sounds on it. Very, very epic, very classical, very symphonic, even a little bit of hip hop, all kinds of stuff going on. Um, the previous album was the one that really got the ball rolling. I know this, they had an EP out or a mini album before this, but um, the look of this and the whole sound of this and the feel, this one that came out slightly um, earlier, this was 85, was a uh, Tomegatherian, which um, was just absolutely brilliant. Um, this was epic, symphonic, oh, this sounding stuff, really, really cool. It kind of set, set them all. And it also had the, uh, the Geiger... Uh, the sleeve there, H.R. Geiger sleeve. Now Geiger was uh, was mates with um, the band, uh, which is also from Switzerland as well, so they must have been part of that artistic artistic community in uh, Switzerland. And uh, I'd actually offered to do um, some designs for them. He went to them and says, "Oh, I'll do you." But I think they waited till they, till they did. They said uh, we really need to um, release something that we uh, we're very proud of that deserves a a, a Giga. Um, Sleeve, so they waited for this, their, their first kind of full length album, and uh, there we go. There's, a, there's, a, there's the thing, it's really, really cool. Thomas, um, it's in G Warrior, I think it's called Thomas Gazy, is his name Gabriel? Gabriel Fisher, uh, the guy in the middle there, he's the, the leader of the band and the only kind of constant member. Um, goes by the name of uh, Tom Warrior um, a lot of the time. Now, they were the um, Kelty Frost. In sort of like morphed out of a band called Hellhammer, and um, as, as, as I've said, with lots of other metal bands, there's quite a lot of lineup changes. There was um, there were a three piece at this point, but um, they expanded to a four piece. I saw them live once; they were a four piece for a while. But um, and then there were there, there were lineups that were kind of like changed during the recordings of albums. I think, but anyway. This is a this is the album everyone turns to along with Into the Pandemonium as they they're sort of like the high point of their creative powers. Um, they did try and change uh, their style a little bit and later, but it didn't really work. But uh, nowadays uh, the band aren't going as Celtic Frost, but um, Tom Warrior has uh, formed another band called um, um, Tripticon, who are going around performing uh, Celtic Frost songs. And I think they're they're actually doing whole evenings of. Uh, like an evening of Celtic Frost uh, performed by Tripticon, which uh, I'd love to see. That'd be great. I think they're even doing that at festivals. But um, anyway, they're uh, like I say, one of the one of the greatest bands of the eighties, I think. Really, not not just metal, and they're one band that I really, really got into during this time. That's uh, Celtic Frost from Switzerland. Coming at number two, uh, number one. Um, 
I did I did a video on this on this band not long back, and they're top ten. So I've got to mention them again because they're so good. Uh, I've been watching a few videos about them by uh, on other channels. On here, the band is Voivod. There we are. I think I showed this. Uh, this was uh, this is their best album in my view. Dimension Hatros Hatros. Um, I've got the CD version. I've got it on vinyl as well. But this was the expanded triple disc version, which is really really cool. It's got a live live rendition of the album. Lots of outtakes and little videos and things. Uh, go and check out my uh, Voivod Top 10 to find out more about these guys. They're just brilliant. Very, very underrated. Underrated as musicians, underrated as a, as a band. Everything uh, everything about them is underrated. <laughs> but uh, anyway, there we go. I've got to mention them again. Voivod, number one. Yeah, that was quick, wasn't it? Right, okay, there you go. So that's some um, heavy metal from the 1980s. Um, uh, that's it, what more can I say? Uh, I've got some more 80s stuff uh, to come. My next video I'll be featuring uh, female acts and female artists of the, the 80s. It'll be another continuation of my Girls to the Front uh, ongoing project. So um, there we go. Anyway, that's all for now from the 80s. Um, hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found it interesting. Go out and check those albums out if you haven't done uh, already. So um, that's me saying bye for now. I'll catch you next time. Thank you.